Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. This is Kshitej. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, which is organized by Shiksha.com. And the topic for today's webinar is lockdown impact on higher education and how students can plan ahead for the future. We have the honor to have uh, an, uh, our, our panel of panelists uh, with us today. We have our experts with us today. Uh, no, uh, and, and I would like to take a few moments to introduce our panelists. Uh, the first uh, we have is we have Dr. Uh, Krishnendu Sarkar. So uh, Dr. Sarkar uh, made his foray with higher education as head of academics of NH NSHM in the year 2002. Since then, he has actively contributed to the growth of the organization from its formative years to its robust presence as knowledge campuses with the various and varied university affiliated programs involving thousands of students. He has been a part of numerous teaching, learning, curriculum, content, collaboration, and co-creation for the cause of experiential and engaging education. He has been one of the early movers weaving technology in non-STEM education, institute industry programs, value-added skills, embedded learning, adversity, programmed learning, international exchanges, e-assessment, holistic grading, UK India Education Research Initiative, supported collaborative development project, thinking and creativity skills for innovation, new vistas and initiatives. Besides, he has he had been hands-on with the students' lifestyle, uh, life cycle management, I'm sorry, life cycle management, faculty development, institutional operations, regulatory compliances, approvals, affiliations, detailed project reports, strategic alliances, and university level roles on behalf of NSHM from time to time. After Dr. Sarkar, we have the honor to have Professor Biswajoy Chatterjee with us today uh, in our uh, panel of experts. So Professor Chatterjee is currently the Vice Chancellor of the University of Engineering and Management, Jaipur. He completed his PhD from the National Institute of Technology, Agartala, specializing nanoscience and in nanotechnology. He's pursuing research in the same domain in addition to computer vision and speech processing. He's a known name in the field of applied robotics and has conducted several national level workshops in robotics. He played an active role in the, in the introduction of applied robotics amongst the graduate students back in 2005 when work in this field was just at a nascent stage. Now, he is an author of 23 SCI international journals, research papers, and many other international and national journals and conferences. He's a member of Confederation of Indian Industry, that is CII, Computer Society of India, CSI, and IEEE. He's also a member of Academic Council and Governing Board of other universities, and is the Chairman, Academic Council, and Vice Chairman, Board of Management at UEM. Jaipur. Thank you. Our third thank panelist you. for today is thank you, sir. Our third panelist for today is Professor Ujwal K. Chaudhary. Professor Chaudhary is the Pro Vice Chancellor and Dean, School of Media, Communications, and Fashion. Professor Ujwal is a leading media and communication academic of India, having been earlier the Dean of Media of Symbiosis Pune and MIT Mumbai Universities, Whistling Woods International, and Academy of Delhi and Mumbai. He is known for his convergent approach to media education, starting from an integrated, broad base, leading to focused specialization at the top. He is a known face in the TV studio debates and a regular writer in Indian media. He had earlier been employed with Business India TV, Z News, Times of India Group, WHO Media, etc. Last but not the least, we have the honor to have Mr. Bidyut Majumdar today with us. Mr. Majumdar has a career spanning for more than 23 years, wherein he has worked as an assistant, he's working as an assistant journal manager at Narla Institute of Technology under GIS Group since September 2012. He also worked as a journal manager for Technable Solutions from April 2005 till January 2009. And prior to that, he also worked as a country manager for Pentasoft in Bangladesh between year 2000 and 2004. I would now like to take a few moments to introduce Shiksha.com as a website, as a portal for students. And 
how the last 12 months have been for Shiksha.com. In the last 12 months, that is from April 1st, 2019 till 31st of March, 2020, we had more than 335 million page views with, 70, with more than 71 million effective students. Shiksha.com had more than 140 million student visits in this duration with an average duration of two minutes and 20 seconds per visit. I'll also give you a brief snapshot of our online presence. So Shiksha.com has information about more than 30,000 plus colleges, which give you details of more than two lakh plus courses and a list of more than 600 plus entrance examinations to keep you updated regarding the important dates and to help you prepare for these entrance exams. We receive a healthy traction on our platform because we host detailed and comprehensive information on both domestic and international institutions to enable the right college decision for students. We have tools to help you like college reviews. We have more than 175,000 college reviews on our website. We have the question and answer platform to answer your higher education related queries. We have eBooks and sample papers. We also have study ab abroad counseling services, college and rank predictors, tools like college comparison to help you choose between your dream colleges and help you decide, news and articles to keep you updated, and tools like Campus Connect to help you connect with the current alumni and faculty to make your decision easier. I would now like to welcome Dr. Krishnendu Sarkar to start his uh, presentation and to educate students on the lockdown impact on higher education and how students can plan ahead for the future. Dr. Krishnendu, welcome, sir. It's an honor to have you here. Please go ahead, sir. I'm sharing the screen right with you now. Yeah, I share my screen. Well, uh, good evening, dear students and uh, respected panelists. Uh, I think uh, it, it, is, it has been a pleasure talking to Professor Chatterjee and it had been my pleasure knowing Professor Ujjal for a long time and also uh, Mr. Bidyut. Hi and hello. Uh, it's very difficult to figure it out uh, the profile of attendees but let me assume that all of you are uh, students. Uh, maybe you are in college or you are supposed to join a college you have just appeared for your class 12 and you're looking for a career ahead and now suddenly you are stuck up because this was something which no science data science in particular has predicted so even uh, your astrologists or famed astrologists they have also not been able to predict uh, this virus attack and uh, we had a virus uh, attacks before and uh, quite recently it was SARS and MERS in Singapore. But then it was localized. It was never like it was spreading like a wild global fire involving 200 odd countries in the world. So we are in a kind of a situation wherein we do not have an end date uh, to say that, okay, by this, this uh, difficult times will end. You, you, you can go to your school, you can go to your college, you can meet your friends have a physical, physical handshake and carry those books, go for your examinations. But then, you know, every adversity, as they say, comes with uh, opportunity. And uh, in this case, it has brought in probably more opportunities, plentiful opportunities to plan not only for our present to make it perfect but also to ensure that we are able to design our future it will be a little different but it won't be difficult yes online is a is a is nothing new you have been involved with your mobiles and your computers since your early years but then talking about face to face learning and replacing that face-to-face -face learning with uh, with completely with online learning will it is a change it is a transformation so any transformation any change in this case might not have a resistance but there will be some kind of a jerk like 
like uh, if if you visit uh, say a, a foreign land and if that is that land happens to be ice land then your body needs to cope up right you are going from india right from a hot climatic zone the body will cope up give it two three days of time and you will enjoy iceland weather am i right now in this case all of you out here attendees in particular you have been seeing surfing the web and internet and and spending probably more screen time than before thankfully for learning because let me tell you that uh, this will be the new normal when i say new normal means we have to get used to uh, this kind of an virtual world today technology i think professor choudhury is here uh, uh, he, he can also highlight on how 3d virtual reality when i talk about uh, this uh, virtual reality stuff even you can have your teacher in front of you the way you you want to see him or her in the classroom i think we can use technology to stream in those lively personalities and more so it can be your icons which you dream of maybe your institute your college can even have a celebrity or somebody which probably you idolize you want to be just in front of you talking to you interacting with you and that will be a little more magical yes we cannot we cannot replace a teacher uh, with a robot professor chatterjee is from robotics but let me tell you that a robot can we can program a robot to become a teacher like professor chatterjee but can we can we create a icon or a idol out of a robot say for example if if you have somebody whom whom you look up in, in your classroom and he or she has some words of wisdom for you won't it be much more meaningful than than a a virtual reality thing or a robotic or some bot in front of you and talking the same thing probably not and that's where the physical entity of education will always be there you see the oxfords and the cambridges of the world have existed for more than 800 years they have also seen so many transformations so many changes they also had a disaster a pandemic like plague and then the then this plague plague brought in to the world somebody like newton because that was a time wherein probably he was he was having a free time to himself and he was more into observations than into his books and then he brought in this invention discovery whatever and likewise many people let me tell you today are using this uh, lockdown times very productively uh, they have been reflective and uh, they are trying to do certain things which probably is part of their uh, interests and they are also picking up new skills which they never thought that they are good at but still they are now learning those skills and probably they will be champions because practice will make people perfect many of you out here who are students who are dreaming for a career and who are little perturbed because the colleges uh, are, are not opening and uh, probably your admissions are not happening the way you would want and you are in a state of confusion don't worry the colleges will open it will open virtually for you you see most of many of the colleges they have they have opened up those virtual gateways for you to interact to look for your career counseling to look for your career options to talk to people and the way you have been doing it uh, physically before your your seniors have done it they have visited physically or maybe have met people the same thing you can do it uh, over computers and uh, you will like it because uh, you you won't spend that much amount of time 
visiting, you know, a place A, B, C in different, different geographies, spending a month, right? Visiting 10 odd institutions that you can do it in a matter of hours. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this giving you a better leeway, a better grip on, on how you can design your career? You, you're getting more opportunities to meet a lot of people, to hear from them, to interact with them. And also webinars like this you're attending, which probably had, had it not been because of this pandemic times, so many webinars or so many discussions over video conferencing platforms would have happened. So we should, we should see opportunity in this adversity. And obviously, let me tell you, you have a huge, huge, let me tell you, very good future. Because yes, options, you are get, getting more options before you, you're able to explore each one of those options and figuring it, figuring it out for yourself that how best you can do. One more, one more very important thing that may tell you which will happen is that uh, suppose if you you uh, you have a college which you probably never looked uh, very aspirational to you, which never looked very aspirational to you, right? And you are looking uh, probably far ahead because the grasses are always greener on the other side of the river, they say. And why not? Yes, you might be right. But just imagine this fact. That the very same college, which is near your place, say, for example, can offer you more today, thanks to the post COVID pandemic times. Because they can bring you more resources at a very affordable kind of a cost. Just imagine that you are going for a foreign internship or a global business. Uh, you're supposed to spend a lot of money for this. Obviously, the gains are more, but again, anyway, you're spending some amount of money for this. And a significant part of that kind of an exposure or that kind of a learning today can happen in a very simulated, gamified kind of an environment, thanks to technology. And you, you will really have those kind of vibes, you know, visiting those locations, meeting with those experts, right you you are interning with uh, with industries worldwide like uh, you have a virtual walkway you, you are taken inside the industry and probably just imagine you are inside a nuclear reactor which probably you know one couldn't have even thought of uh, you know earlier because uh, they would not allow you physically to to be inside so those things can be simulated for you to give you those near real-time experiences. As I said that I have no clue that whether you are into colleges, pursuing your final year studies or your media studies, or you are you have just uh, passed your or appeared for your last year examinations. So what I can tell you is uh, that uh, things will be very, very interesting from now on. And uh, I have written something which might interest you, and I will request Shiksha to put this article uh, for you because uh, those can uh, give you certain leads on how best uh, you can you can really cope up well with the changing uh, changing times. You need not be a computer expert, uh, you know. To but obviously you should be savvy. You should be computer savvy, and uh, and as I said that the world will come to you. You need not run and chase the nook and corners of the world for your life and livelihood and for your careers. The world will come to you. Yes, you're supposed to pay money, but that money will be nothing via the amount of returns the gains which you will get. And that is a bright spot. That is a huge, huge bright spot. Now, obviously people people are having a lot of questions that uh, I know that if I ask you, that I, are you feeling a little low? Are you feeling a bit depressed than before? Are you feeling sad that uh, you know, people are unable to come up with a cure? And the answer might be yes. But then if I say that, uh, have you lost hope? 
in the tomorrow or in the future and i'm sure many of you will will jump up and say ki why should i lose hope and that's good and that should be the kind of an attitude which probably we should we should wear and handshake with the big big digital world right and people have a lot of questions hey can you bring in those multi sensory you know, sensory uh, you know experiences or senses sensual uh, experiences uh, which otherwise you would get into a face to face discussion many of you had gone for tuitions and you prefer going to meet your teacher and uh, sit beside him or her and take tutor lessons and obviously that is a kind of experience because that was little multi sensory you know because uh, uh, you, you can you can figure it out your different senses are reacting responding to some stimuli which probably right now when you are sitting on the other side of a computer and you are taking tutoring lessons probably that you will feel that it is unidimensional but let me tell you things will change things will change and the way you see virtual reality on screen maybe the time is not that far that when your brain will get you know through certain devices which we'll be wearing will be able to impart to us the screen to body sensory experiences and that will uh, bring more life into this kind of an virtual uh, you know, interactions or learning or or interactions uh, interacting and things like that the future of india let me tell you is brighter than before it is brighter because uh, we we have a huge demographic dividend and uh, and we can we can sorry you want to finish should should i finish okay okay no sir that's fine uh, please go ahead okay 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 now uh, to to my young to my young attendees i can only i can only give you give you a, a very right it is not an exaggeration let me tell you it's not that probably we are all sitting in india and most of us are indians we are talking good about india it's not like that it is based on facts my dear that all of us have been talking about this demographic dividend since a long time since the last many years but somehow we were not having a clue right that how best to you know leverage on this kind of a demographic dividend and you can only leverage you can only exploit this this demographic dividend when i said demographic dividend my dear students uh, it it is like we have a probably the world's highest population under 30 right and that is that is a huge huge gain for india and how do you max how do you end cash on your demographic dividend is by way of smart literacy by educating them by empowering them and india is such a vast country and obviously it it's its investment in education is very low in terms of the share percentage share of its gdp we have the other countries so we do not have those public institutions here there everywhere thanks to the private institutions the private universities and the private colleges they are doing fabulous job and let me tell you today india is very higher up in it and technology thanks to private engineering colleges in particular down south and the west in those times because the public institutions were too few far and between today even the situation is has not changed the public institutions have not grown but thankfully in the private space the quality education is available but still it cannot meet the requirement it cannot cater to those 700 million population of young population to be precise so what should be the media what should be those medium the medium is online the media is new media which we say probably we can reach quality education till the last mile somebody sitting in in the remote parts of munger should not worry that probably he or she is not in mumbai for his education or for his better career he can sit in munger and thankfully india is coming up with with good bandwidth facilities that you, you might have 
I read those reports about Facebook picking up some stake with Reliance Geo and uh, and 5G technologies coming. So 5G will be game changer. 5G will bring you those those sensory experiences which I was talking about. Those typical near real life experiences, right? Uh, which which will give you a, a, a kind of an it will basically bridge the physical and the digital. It will interfacing the physical world and the digital world and giving you a experience which will be a classy, a world-class learning experience at affordable cost, thanks to this technology. And India is heading towards that. India has, India has let me tell you, I don't know whether most of you are aware that there are certain things called MOOCs, which is called Massive Open Online Learning Courses. It is online certification courses. And India has the largest repository of such courses. You can you can search the Google. If you have a pen and paper, you can write SWEM or NPTEL. Both have now combined. So that, that has the world's largest repository of online programs and courses. Practically, with no cost it's so affordable you're only paying for the certification that's all and years back we had perfected distance education today igno has the world's largest enrollment right uh, under distance uh, programs so only one thing was missing which which probably you can say was quality and even the perception because people at large thought that distance education or online education probably won't be good because see i am supposed to visit a college and enjoy the canteen and be the, in the classrooms have an interaction with the teachers probably that's not happening in distance mode the perception will change because these distance education these remote programs will bring in a lot of value remember when i said in the beginning that just imagine the college which probably you were not very aspirational about, which was uh, in your city, right? Can be very aspirational for you. How? That apart or besides the resources which that particular college or the university can offer you, tomorrow they will be, they will be well placed to bring you the best of resources streamed in at in your classrooms or at your homes right you will be able to experience the world-class skilling in those virtual lab environments isn't it wonderful so cutting my long story short that tomorrow what will happen is yes the brands will be there okay this brand of education will be aspirational or more aspirational for me but overall the situation will be that each and every participant in whichever college or university or school you are in you will have a huge opportunity to embrace and accumulate assimilate world-class education and that is the fantastic reality and that is where india will again gain its pole position it will be the golden sparrow let me tell you once india perfects this content online content and matches with the world-class courseras and the udemy's and the edx's of the world which india will they will bring in even a lot of vernacular content which 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 will be which which can give you a very liberal view or a, or a kind of an uh, which will educate you beyond your curriculum right so assigned students can participate and can investigate in areas beyond science and then if you are reflective then you can imagine that everything each and everything is because of science <laughs> be it a thing or an item or a course or material content there is a science in everything so tomorrow uh, sorry 
Dr. Sarkar, uh, uh, so uh, I'm sorry to cut you short. Uh, apologies. Uh, we uh, can we move to the next panelist if you can just uh, sure. close the sure. space because we, we have uh, yes. one and a half hour to complete the session. Right. Okay. So I, I can I, I can only say at the end, which which probably I would want to stress that uh, yes, the times are little complex, bit confusing as of now. But then what I see, what all our panelists will discuss probably and what you might be also reading and hearing is all true, that the world will be a better place to be. Thank you and see you in the interactive session. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarkar, uh, for this valuable piece of information. And uh, now I would like to move on to uh, our next uh, panelist. Uh, we have Professor Biswajoy Chatterjee with us. Uh, so, Professor Biswajoy, I would like to now welcome you and uh, request you to talk to the audiences and guide them through this time of crisis, sir. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, see, uh, the topic for today is lockdown impact on higher education. So uh, let me just touch upon the questions that are mainly focused upon in this session. So if I take the questions one by one, then uh, definitely my the first question that comes up is, how has today's scenario of lockdown and global pandemic impacted your education system? Impacted the education system. So basically lockdown impact, what is the impact on higher education? Uh, let me firstly tell you that all of you will agree with me that internet is a huge, huge resource for studying. In internet, you can find several, several materials, several, several videos, several, several study materials, which you can refer to and learn a lot either through a teacher or through your own. What this lockdown has done or the effect of COVID-19 has done is it has taught us both way rounds. It has taught us what is the necessity of having a physical class? What is the necessity of having the peer? What is the necessity of having your friend sit beside you and learn together? What is the necessity of the teacher physically being present in front of you and write on a piece of board, write on a board with a piece of chalk. At the same time, it has taught us that through internet, what extraordinary we can do, what we can learn. In fact, I believe what it has done is for those people who were not internet savvy, those people who were mainly dependent on physical classes, teachers to teach them, students to help them, yeah, his uh, peer to help them, they have actually learned a lot how online education can help. Because he has learned how to attend a webinar. He has learned how to attend a class, maybe through Google Meet, maybe through GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, whatever you say. They have learned how to do it. They have learned about the different, different online resources that are present, which maybe they were unaware prior to this for those people who are less, less aware about this online resources. At the same time, I believe those people who did not really like to have a physical class or the physical class was maybe a matter of force for them given by the teacher, forced attendance or to mark his attendance or her attendance, somebody used to attend the class, he used to maybe mainly refer on the refer to the online resources or depend on the online resources. Today they have learned that physical classes have got such a, such a high impact or such a necessity it is. It is how it is really important to have the teachers talking to you one to one. It is really necessary for the teachers to suddenly ask you a question, make you stand up and ask a question. It is so necessary for the teachers to write on the board with that small piece of chalk. So it has really learned, it, it has really made us learn both ways. That is what I believe. 
impact that has happened on higher education is mainly on the students on this way. I believe after this COVID-19 situation will be over, when the world will again start smiling, you will find that you will, you have got a two-way weapon in front of you. You have learned how to use online resources and you have understood the importance of physical education. On higher education, I really don't believe it has done that much impact which it had, which, which it was supposed to, which, which it could have done. Because the higher educational institutes have very quickly, very, very quickly adopted to these new methods. Today, classes are happening, at least I can talk from my point of view. I am uh, the Vice Chancellor of EM Jaipur. I can talk from my point of view. All classes, all classes without any loss are happening online through these platforms like Google Meet, maybe GoToMeeting, maybe GoToWebinar, maybe Cisco WebEx. All these classes are happening exactly as per routine. Laboratories are happening, in fact. How are the laboratories happening? Laboratories are happening through Again, there's different software, different platforms like there's a MHRD, MHRD platform which is called Virtual Lab. Through that Virtual Lab, laboratories are happening. Through several platforms like HackerRank, coding is happening. Through MATLAB, electrical and electronic students are attending the laboratory. So higher education, it has not really impacted the way it could have impacted the studies at least. Yes, as far as Many people will say that uh, the students who are passing out of class 12, like I got to understand that many of you attending this webinar are class 12 pass outs and they are looking for admissions. Yes, you might have been depressed a bit that how to go ahead with admissions, how to know how to or should I rather go out, go out for admissions, all this thing you are having. It is going on in your mind. Maybe maybe you have been impacted, but yes, higher education has not really been impacted. So those students who are really in a question that what I should do, I would really tell you the institutes in which you are attracted to or really want to get admission into, you can contact and go ahead with it because classes are going on in online mode. Laboratories are going on in online mode and it is very less impacted. It could have been impacted much more. The educational institutes have very quickly adopted. That is what I should say. Uh, as an institute, I would believe that we have got several initiatives to take because lockdown, if lockdown impacts higher education, then we have got a huge role to play. So as I said that, yes, we have used different platforms and I make you aware of all those platforms in this session today, that these are several platforms like when we started, we started with Zoom, but then Zoom was not allowed, Zoom was disallowed by the government. Then we very quickly shifted to Google Meet, very quickly shifted to Hangouts, then this go to webinar, all these methods. As I told you already, Virtual Lab is an option for doing laboratory. Exams can be conducted. Exams can be conducted very easily. If that is a question that, that is a very common question coming up. Let me take up this question that yes, lockdown you're saying has not impacted higher education classes or the uh, maybe the laboratories, but how will you conduct the exams? Let me tell you, the exams can also be conducted in a way like in all higher education institutes, the rule is that the teacher is to student is 20 is to one. That is for every 20 students, you have one teacher. So because all the exams are not going on parallelly, maybe one fourth of the students are attending the exam at one time. At one time, only one fourth of the students are attending the exam. It is possible that only 10 students are assigned to one teacher while an exam is being conducted. So the entire exam can be shared through different platforms like in our university in Jaipur, we have got our own uh, education system. We have got our own uh, yeah, governance software, but there are software like Google Classroom also general software through that Google Classroom. You can share a question paper with the students. The students get the question paper and the answer. If it is a long answer, then the students can write the answer on a piece of paper, scan it from his mobile and simply upload it in that same Google Classroom. And from that Google Classroom, it can be assigned to the students, uh, to the teachers to check. Now question comes that how will a teacher check the answer script? How will the teacher check that no malpractice is going on? 
again for that what is done is the question paper there are two ways the question paper can be set in a way which is open book type what it says is the questions are challenging in a way that you allow the students to consult the book you simply consult the book and write the answers but consulting the book is not enough you have to apply your knowledge you have to apply your mind to get an answer to that question so that ensures that even if you are using a book then there is no problem and the other one whether you are taking help from a teacher or not can be done through platforms like google meet or maybe this uh, go to meeting it can be easily done because as i said that one teacher can be assigned 10 students so one teacher can easily invigilate 10 students in one in such a platform so these are the ways i am talking about because i thought that how it has impacted higher education i should talk about like how higher education organize how the higher education universities or the colleges should tackle the different problems i have answered to that question that how to conduct the exams or how to conduct the laboratories about the students response to this initiatives see again i will tell you i cannot generalize but as far as my university is concerned i am the vice chancellor of em jaipur in my university i have seen that the students have taken this up very very sincerely students have attended class and i don't know why i don't know i really don't know why the attendance of students have increased like in our university the rule is you must have 80% attendance if you don't have 80% attendance you cannot attend the exams so we generally see students comply with that 80% attendance but somehow ever since this lockdown has started ever since we have gone for an online mode of class the attendance generally remains to 95 to 99% i don't know i am really i, I really i have to uh, really investigate upon that a question if you ask me why it is so uh, straight forward how i feel why i feel it is so i believe it is because it is easier for the students to attend because maybe many students miss out maybe they cannot reach in time maybe they are not uh, they are unable to wake up in time maybe they were studying late late night so they could not wake up early so they may miss the class there may be several reasons for that but somehow attendance has very very highly improved that is what is my observation so students are really responding very well to this new initiative so i really assure you people also if you have passed class 12 and you are wanting to get admitted get yourself admitted to a college i assure you that the college will take care once you are registered their college will take care that you receive all the links of the different classes in time and you can attend all the classes all the laboratories all the exams in time and our responsibility as a higher education institute is to ensure that you people do not lose any time whatsoever again i say as the vice chancellor of um jaipur i assure any student who is coming in or our students i assure you will not lose any time another question that is com coming up higher education to a huge extent involves placement to use the word placement see many students are interested with this even you know, if you have passed class 12 and attending this session then you are asking yourself okay i will uh, maybe i i will think about like maybe attending classes online for a year maybe or 6 months or 9 months whatever but then after 4 years what will be the placement scenario what will be the industry scenario see i will tell you there is a big opportunity for the country you must have read in several places because you must understand there is a huge emotion going against china i am not getting into any political issue or anything like that but if you follow if you ask if you hear different people speak if you talk to general people if you interact with people you will find that there is a huge emotion that is playing against china so even if it is not possible for many many companies to shift their head office or shift their base from china but it is true that many such companies will do so and therein lies a huge huge opportunity for india to grab if that happens then many industries will shift many many industries will shift to india which will open the gateway for wonderful placement time wonderful opportunities 
of employment coming up very very soon and you people you have four years of time left for you to get into an industry so i really believe our country will make hay by that time now about the current batch is placement like if higher education is not impacted to that greatest extent then placement for the current batch is it impacted i would say that if you have read in the different news and the different genuine news channels you have heard you have seen that many it companies are thinking of remaining a percentage or or keeping back a percentage of its work back in online mode that is they want to keep a percentage of work in online mode itself because they say that they are saving a lot in that way so many students after this lockdown is over are also getting opportunities for internship or for placement or for jobs in a work from home mode also yes many companies are a bit afraid many companies are thinking whether to give new joinings but then again many companies are open opening up especially in the digital sector there is a lot lot of recruitment going on like this shiksha shiksha is doing this uh, conducting this webinar it is an online platform i am sure mr shitij will agree with me that shiksha is also opening up a huge zone of recruitment because all these advertisements which were through the maybe newspapers or the holdings have gone through shik gone to shiksha now or gone to the other digital platforms which means the digital platforms are now recruiting in a big way so yes many companies are a bit afraid to give new joinings but many companies are opening up several several opportunities so that is a way yes i am not right now in a position to analyze whether the num number of jobs have already matched i feel that is no the answer to that is no it has not yet matched because the situation is dicey but i believe very soon it will manage and it will over overcome it will surpass one last thing i will take up that is students interpersonal and team management skills whether that is being taken over by the or can other higher education institutions is that possible to take over the interpersonal skills see i will tell you that therein lies my point that those people who actually did not find the physical classes so interesting or so attractive have understood that yes there was something in this physical classes there was something in the teachers scolding there was something in the teachers making you stand and answer there was something in the teachers writing with that small piece of chalk on that board there is something yes interpersonal skill is also something like that interpersonal skills when you interact one to one it definitely is helps you more but then again if you are online like we, we are organizing several debate sessions online we are organizing we are using go to meeting this uh, google meet and all this and organizing debate sessions where several people are joining and doing debate we are organizing cultural functions where students are coming up and doing the cultural program they are dancing they are singing all these things are being done online to some extent it is possible but then again yes it is very difficult to replace the physical mode of learning to for as far as this interpersonal skill is concerned but i tell you the last thing world will again smile don't worry don't lose a year time is there you will definitely come up we will definitely come up and india will emerge victorious india will emerge a better country than before mr shitij i believe it's time for me i have uh, taken a bit of more time maybe 4 minutes more thank you so much thank you well that's all right sir and uh, thank you so much for uh, no Uh, giving us this information uh, i'm i'm sure it was uh, valuable and uh, would uh, give optimism to a lot of uh, audiences to a lot of students who are listening to this uh, and uh, colleagues and friends uh, so uh, without wasting any more mr shitij i believe you have been muted oh i'm sorry <laughs> okay so uh, 
again i would like to thank uh, uh, mr biswa uh, biswa joy chatterjee and uh, we would like to move ahead and uh, would like to move to our next expert who is uh, professor utwal k choudhury pro vice chancellor and dean school of media communication and fashion uh, professor well, choudhury sir, welcome I'll sir just, uh, stop my webcam here thank you sure sir professor choudhury please go ahead sir welcome and thank you so much for joining Yeah. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Unmuted now. So 30 minutes plus 20 minutes. Two speakers, 50 minutes. 10 minutes remaining for the last two speakers. What do we do? First, tell me how much time do I have? Uh, we, sir, sir, uh, it, it's a one and a half hour session. So you can okay. take your time. You can take your 15, 20 minutes. And uh, no, we, we are looking forward to hear from you. And then okay. the last was, 10 minutes, uh, we will take the Q&A. I was told one hour, so I was a little worried. Anyway, uh, a lot of points have been already made. First of all, uh, you know, for full introduction, I'm a pro vice chancellor of Adamas University based out of Kolkata, former dean of symbiosis and Amity universities. Um, and here I'm, I have the pleasure of addressing you. A lot of points have been made. I would begin by telling what demonetization did to fintech. So after demonetization, digital payments became commonplace. Everyone went on to digital payments, including uh, card payment and uh, what you call uh, rupee and Paytm and all that. Similarly, coronavirus pandemic uh, that is now going on has done the same thing to edutech and health tech. So we are moving to a new area, a new era of educational technologies. All the plans, the calendar of programs and uh, you know timeline made by the universities have gone everywhere because this was something that nobody predicted. So under this situation, everyone is relearning and reinventing himself, both the faculty and the students. And I stand to tell that a lot of faculty members who have been with a lot of degrees and a lot of experience, but were so far refusing to come into digital medium and considering even social media as fad, as time loss, wastage of time, are becoming dinosaurs now. And many I have seen in the last few weeks are going practically out of circulation because they're unable to log on to or move on to digital teaching mentoring. So this is a time, and, and it must be noted because the educational sector, for whatever reasons, too much of premium given to degrees earned 30 years ago, that there were a lot of dinosaurs in the education sector. And the students, in spite of their degrees and years and years of experience, many students were not so happy with them. So they are going out of circulation is a good news for educational sector, in fact, the times to come. I would also like to say the old normal of December 2019 will never be coming back again after this corona phase is over. First of all, the COVID-19 phase will not be over overnight. And there will be social distancing. There will be new sorts of techniques that will be coming forth. As we have just now seen, the UGC has ordered that all final exams of the current semester should be organized in uh, July. And the new batch of the current semesters, current batches, new semester should start in August. The new batch of 2020 should start in September 1. So as this has been already told, which is completely out of the plan of the universities and the colleges, similarly, there will be many things ahead which are not even thought of just now. For example, schools and universities and colleges can be asked to have alternate days for different batches. Say, first year, third year can come on three days of the week, alternate days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And the other three days of the week, second year and fourth year can come. So odd years and three days, even years and three days, it can happen to create social distancing. There could be other forms of social distancing as well, completely unthought, uh, unplanned uh, at this point of time. So the new normal, digital is going to occupy the space along with physical education almost equally. So to think that this is a temporary phenomenon is a completely wrong perception. And those who think, will be in for shock after this period is over. And there is no end to this period in short time. 
a, a particular flatile, uh, uh, any flu has been con uh, controlled only when antidote and vaccine have come. And with normally an antidote and vaccine, even now at the speed at which the work is going on, and my, I must appreciate Serum Institute of India uh, of the Punawalas and the Oxford University Virology Department for doing enormous work to bring in vaccine and antidote for COVID-19, but still that will take a year. Until then, some, so, for, so, some form or sort of social distancing will continue. So it is a time for relearning and reinventing the faculty and the students. So what we have been doing is what perhaps most of others are also doing. Moving on to Zoom, a lot of sessions are being held on Zoom. Yeah. Google Class, Google Class, yeah. uh, uh, as usually being held. Google Meets, Microsoft Meets, and WebEx, and GoToWebinar, which is now what we are talking at this point of time on GoToWebinar. And in Google Class, a lot of assignments can be given that has been explained to you by the previous speaker. The universities are also moving on to new learning management systems. Some institutes had their systems, but they were not active very much. Students and teachers were not using them very much. Now people are started have started using them a lot, like Blackboard, Collaborate, and we in Adamas University, Kolkata, we are in TCS Iron. TCS Iron is a similar learning management system where classes can be held, assignments can be given, group discussions can be done, debate can be continued. Uh, there are debate chats also, web chats as well for debates and all. People are also reinventing social media. Across the country, schools and colleges have found Facebook page of their Facebook uh, in the timeline of their institutes as a good notice board. Instagram as a repository of visuals and stories that the students are doing to be posted. So even in our, our social media, if someone goes to Adamas University Facebook page as well, or Instagram, or LinkedIn, the creative work of the students during lockdown are being presented. And this has created a newfound unity, integrity, and friendship bonding among youngsters. I am finding short films being made where one dialogue is and one shot is generated in each home of the student. 40 students, 40 shots, and a short film is made with one single idea. Similarly, posters coming together, one single idea. A great way to learn together, a great way to create together. People are creating such lovely things. In effect, someone has written that Facebook timeline has become the podium of creativity when the stage is not there physically. It's indeed very interesting. New exam forms should be coming. Online exam, quiz, and open book exam, where you cannot copy paste. There is no what is. Uh, give the classifications of such questions are not there. Define not to, such questions are not there. Only situations are given. How do you react to situation? How do you analyze that situation? So analytical, imaginative, creative. This sort of uh, questions would be there. In spite of having books, you can't copy paste from anywhere. And that's true learning because if you have internalized the topic, you can answer the topic better. So new exam forms are coming. So going ahead, so first, first of all, let me, going ahead, let me say, welcome the change. You have no choice just now, we have no choice just now. So welcome the change, make your disadvantage your advantage. Make your adversity your opportunity. Make your crisis a possibility of new thing, a new dimension. And as I said, new normal will be qualitatively different from the old normal. And therefore, one must understand that there is no return to the old normal. The digital will equally stand with the physical education going ahead. And I call it blended education. A blended education is the world of tomorrow. Something you learn, you seek and learn yourself. Something you learn face to face with your mentors. And for the first time, let me also tell, there is nothing called teaching, because anything that we would like to teach you, you can Google it and find it. So no information can be taught. That's there in the digital world anyway. And if anything new develops, also would find place in the digital world in times to come. come. So it's not about the world of teaching anymore. And there is no world of student anymore. Students are to be told, instructed, guided, disciplined and the study in classroom the study for diplomas and degrees and these are 20th century concepts at least in higher education these are obsolete 
we are only senior professional academic professionals you are junior learners that's all we are almost like colleagues because you are all adults 18 years and more so therefore going ahead a teacher is a mentor a mentor who throws light on a subject first time creates the first stimulus how do you take upon yourself the stimulus how do you react to the stimulus is all up to you you take it up further so you have to create a digital personality love it or hate it a digital personality is a must going ahead and for digital personality that's the way i'm wearing a shirt i'm wearing a pant i'm wearing a shoe or a, a footwear similarly you have to have a smartphone with internet connection you have to have a wi-fi at the home or the hostel wherever you are and you must have a laptop these three are as important as the shirt the pant and the shoe without which you cannot exist you cannot move and without these three digital tools the starting point of digital resources you cannot move and in fact i understand that 50 to 60 percent of the country may not actually avail of these products or resources and therefore i strongly would like to point out digital access is the new human right of the digital era so digital access must be there as you need food water you need connectivity and governments must take to take it to concern and distribute tablets low cost tablets with digital connection at least up to a point digital connection some up to some net in a, in a package across the country to all youths this is needed in times to come the other point i'd like to say this period after being a digital personality you can utilize this period for in-depth research in a chosen area in-depth research someone wants to come into media someone wants to come into retail management someone to biotech virology in the times of public health care being important and in times to come public health care will be furthermore important virology biotech or biosciences biochemistry or, or pharmaceuticals are becoming important areas of learning and in engineering newer areas are coming traditional engineering as we know as mechanical civil electrical electronics are becoming old time so we are moving to an era where along with these traditional subjects you need artificial intelligence machine learning you need cyber security you need perhaps some other areas like cryptocurrency or blockchain and these and even in management newer areas like logistics management so how do you know about it there is there is enough and more matter online so this is the time to do an in-depth research on your chosen area this is the time to also let, attend to seminars and webinars just the way i think 79 just now are people who are listening to this webinar at the beginning i saw 110 were there so these people who are listening this way you can keep searching about webinars and seminars and various various subjects and there are many dime a dozen at this point of time webinars is the way of life of interaction and i will also suggest you have got september 1 to start the new batch you have got august 1 to start the existing batches so that's 90 days to 120 days long time as someone says that in 21 days you can develop a new habit and in 60 days you can develop a new lifestyle and here we are talking of 90 days and 120 days you can actually get into web learning so maybe you can register for web learning we in our institute for all our students and all who are getting admission just now taking admission many are we are having all india uh, admission tests online purely so we are getting into course era the institute has tied up with Coursera University, Adamas University has tied up with Coursera, and we are providing free access to Coursera, which is a course of one lakh rupees minimum each course, free access to the current students, current teachers, and the students who are taking admission. So suppose someone wants to come into pharmaceuticals, the elementary or basics of pharmacy can be studied online just now. You can study, suppose someone wants to come into photography or loves photography, so elementary photography or basics of photography can be learned online. There is Udemy, there is Upgrade, there are many more. But what we are taking resort to is Coursera because that gives certification from the American universities. So the point what I'm saying is that being a digital personality, having an in-depth research in a chosen area of your choice, 
selected webinars attending and short certified courses these are the four good things apart from getting the resources that you need the resources are a laptop uh, whatever configuration i mean basic configuration uh, a, a smartphone with net connection and wi-fi where you stay or if you're, if you're in a hostel wherever you stay a wi-fi connection so these are the ways of battling the situation just now but this situation is though unnatural apparently will not remain unnatural will be a part of your life because going ahead many smart universities will not get into five days or six days week uh, weeks they might get into three days week or four days week and give the remaining days for self-learning online or digital classes as well so that the physical and the digital can coexist some part of the testing and evaluation examination will happen online so this is how people would be going ahead and i would look forward to listening or hearing from you all in times to come how you are coping out coping up please understand welcoming a new situation is the only and situation on which you do not have a control is the only right way frustration depression suffering from uncertainty confusion are signs of a weak heart a strong person always tries to understand the new situation and adapts to it digital personality in the online search for the chosen area webinars of your choice and online courses these four are the way to move ahead i have taken 15 minutes exactly and i would like to stop here thank you thank you so much uh, professor chaudhary for uh, giving us the insights uh, as to how to deal with this pandemic and how to pre uh, prepare ourselves mentally during this uh, covid-19 crisis and uh, now we are done with uh, the presentations and piece of information from all the panelists that we have so uh, let's take uh, uh, your questions one by one i'll take the questions from the audiences and uh, all the panelists can pitch in and uh, you know uh, let's try and answer a few queries that that we have from the uh, students so uh, the first uh, question is from uh, mohammed uh, mohammed uh, sayen so mohammed wants to ask how much uh, uh, you know what, what what would be the unemployment be like Post this uh, COVID-19 crisis, so is it likely to increase uh, after this uh, pandemic? First of all, uh, uh, for in the short run, there will be an increase of unemployment. If someone is telling that there will be no unemployment, it's completely lie, because C C Council for Monitoring Indian Economy has already told 119 million people that 12 crores people have already lost uh, lost job, out of which. Six point something crores is in the organized sector, so that's a short-term thing. But I believe the youngsters who are here are in the knowledge economy, are for knowledge economy, for skilled and educated uh, workforce. For them, I would like to say that you have to move on to digital skills very fast. Digital skills, new skills, and niche skills will ensure that your job situation may not be as bad as it is projected now. However, IMF was already told. 3.5% of the world economy will actually reduce, will shrink. And that means for a short while, there will be a crisis of jobs. And this is the time to increase your skills. When there is a crisis in the job market, that is the right time to upgrade your skills because when the upswing in the economy will come, which is a cycle, it will come. An upswing will come. This skilled manpower would be of far more use. That's my feedback on this question. Can I can I also Thank chip you, in? Professor Chaudhary. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, sure. Maybe, sir, please maybe, go ahead. Maybe a line which probably I can add is that listen, uh, Mr. Muhammad, that it will bring new vocations as well. Like uh, you know, when computers arrived in the scene in India, people thought that because of computers, many would look, lose jobs. Partially, it happened for a moment, but then see how it and ict has created huge huge number of vocations so this online and electronic and digital world will create new vocations for that obviously a new set of skills will be required and that is where a smarter institution in which you belong to or which you aspire to be should guide you well 
and connect you to the world as i said to equip you equip you with with those hands on knowledge and skills so that you are ready for that particular new vocation of choice great thank you sir and uh, dr chatterjee uh, do you want to add to it sir am i audible uh, yes sir you are audible please go oh. ahead yeah, see, the thing is, I will absolutely agree with Professor Ujjal. Uh, see, the initially there will be a uh, shortage of jobs. Many, many people will lose jobs initially. But then again, your digital skills, your skills in general will matter. The new emerging technologies, how good you are at, that will matter. And uh, if you make yourself skillful through the coming days, maybe for the coming three years, for the coming four years, as per requirement of the industry, then you will never be shortage of jobs. Like for the last one year, if people have, if I'm, I'm from computer science background, so I'm talking uh, slightly from that uh, angle. Uh, say, for example, the co people from computer science, if they have equipped themselves in the last one year, maybe in the fields of artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, cloud computing, uh, then other sectors which are emerging, then definitely you will never be shortage of jobs in the coming time because industry needs a lot of people skilled in that sector so you will definitely get a good job yes there will be some shortage of jobs in the initial phases but as i said there's a huge opportunity for india to make it big and create new job in this scenario thank right. you thank you so much dr chatterjee for your answer and uh, thank you all the panelists uh, for for your respective answers now uh, we move on to the next question and uh, we have questions from students like ananya samantha and anvesha ghosh uh, they want to ask uh, you know uh, basically what what they should do in the in such a situation and what are the uh, some of, what are some of the courses they can opt for during this crisis which would give them benefits in the future i had already included these suggestions earlier the courses depend on your choice of career ahead there cannot be one single format for everyone. However, having said this, digital learning techniques, this must be a compulsory course or compulsory learning for everyone asking for any sort of courses. But those who are going into, let's say, STEM subjects, science, technology, uh, uh, mathematics, uh, engineering, that, that area, uh, Professor Bishuja has just now noted, AL, artificial intelligence, ML, uh, AI, ML, machine learning, cybersecurity, uh, blockchains, these are the newer developments that, can have, that have come. If you can do some basic studies on that, it's great. For those who are coming to non-engineering areas, for example, for example, let's say management, data analytics is a good area because that's futuristic. And artificial intelligence is also important there. If a retail is an important there, and e-retailing, particularly digital retailing, because going ahead, digital retailing in social distancing era would be very important. If someone is coming into the communications field, it's also important, uh, an important area emerging. So digital marketing and digital branding could be an area on which you can do some short course. There are several short courses available, Udemy, Upgrade, Coursera, and many more are there you can search yourself, depending on the cost that they are asking. In our case, in our university, we provide these courses for, of Coursera free, when someone takes admission but there are other courses you can pay for and do apart from that i said attending webinars is a very good culture at this point of time just now you are attending a webinar and i'm sure what you knew about this situation some three or two hours ago and what you knew now perhaps is slightly different thank you yes 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 dr sarkar yeah, it is very uh, difficult to assess because uh, I think uh, Anvesha and Samantha, uh, I don't know exactly in which uh, discipline are you in. But of course, there is problem of plenty right now with so much of certifications around and short courses around. And with everybody telling the same thing, you know, go for online courses, go for this course or that course or this technology or that technology. Uh, what I would suggest is that uh, to both of you is why don't you check on with your teacher, mentor, you know, 
and assess because there is something called to tomorrow what I believe will be digital psychology that how equipped you are in terms of your digital mindset because that will only allow you to connect with that particular world of knowledge and data and uh, then you have to figure it out because tomorrow the jobs might be like one too many for example it can be plug and play say for example eight hours of your work you can involve yourself maybe three hours for one kind of a job another set of time for a, a peculiar set of job and so it, it will involve a variety of skills right and uh, so that is where probably you have to first of all ensure that you have a digital mindset you have an appetite for a, a range of skills it's not only in your area of strength but go for that kind of an exhaustive and expansive kind of an uh, broad outlook while you remain with your core because as I said, I don't know in which discipline are you in or you aspire to be. Whatever you are, you have to deepen your knowledge in that skill. Because why it will be important for you to widen your skills so that you can take up many assignments uh, it, uh, as your avocations. It will be very, very important for the world to know or the digital world to know that exactly where you belong or where you are coming from. So whatever you are doing, ensure that you are able to anchor yourself well in that area. It can be STEM area or a non-STEM area. But as I said, that be it any area, you will be having a bit of computer science involved, a bit of data science involved, and that is important. Remain rooted in your area while you broaden your outlook in, in those skills around you. And get yourself prepared for this plug and play kind of an scenario of the future this is just a speculation from my side but it might be true that uh, there cannot uh, there won't be one particular shoe for you to walk you, you might you might uh, fit in you might have to fit in in, in different shoes uh, you know when it comes to avocation and work for in the future so more the skills more it is better thank you so much dr sarkar uh, and uh, dr chatterjee you want to add in yeah, I will uh, ask this uh, like uh, Annesha was the uh, asked the question. Uh, somebody called Annesha or Ananna. She is uh, from which? She's she's uh, like uh, she has passed out of class 12 or she is a student of engineering. Like my, the answer depends really on her profile, like uh, what she's doing, because if she is an engineering student, then I will definitely say in engineering, you kindly look into the different courses under Coursera, Udemy like uh, professor Ujjal said like uh, coursera we they have tied up with almost several universities in india like in our case also in emj Jaipur, i have requested all my students to enroll for all those courses because those courses are worth rupees one lakhs normally as professor Ujjal said but you can do it absolutely for free so i have requested my students to enroll for all those courses free and you can do it uh, definitely if you are an engineering student your college you kindly inquire your college must have also uh, um, uh, enrolled under this or must have been entered into the same MOU so kindly look into that you can enroll under the several courses under data science or artificial intelligence or machine learning or cloud computing uh, or, or whatever is the pattern like IOT the emerging technologies under engineering if you are a maybe electrical engineering student then you should look for this green green concepts like whatever new Courses are available under the green concepts, renewable energy resources, courses like this. If you are uh, from a civil department, then definitely look under, look for your emerging technologies that are available at the moment. You kindly look for those courses. If you are a class 12 pass out, then I will definitely say, see, take it a bit easy. It's not that when you have to learn all these things right at the beginning or right at this time, you should be making, using this opportunity to make yourself stronger in mathematics. To make yourself stronger in physics mainly these two physics and mathematics you should look for making yourself stronger with new books new uh, ebooks new online resources and um, if you have the opportunity to learn a little bit more then yes programming you can learn any language of programming like c or c plus plus or java whatever it's suitable for you you can learn one such language there are several online resources again you can simply search over in google Several such resources are available, ebooks are available, so you can learn those things. So, this is, that is how I believe 
you should use your time thank you thank you so much dr chatterji and uh, i just uh, looked up and anvesha is an engineering student so i hope anvesha that covers uh, your uh, your question and uh, it answers your query and i'm sure uh, anybody who is uh, uh, you know passing out the 12th uh, uh, among our audiences uh, it would uh, give them a lot of clarity as well uh, the answer from uh, dr chatterji now the other question is from siddharth helder and uh, uh, this question is uh, for professor sarkar uh, but I'm, I'm i would welcome all the panelists to chip in as well uh, so he says that uh, uh, you know, as you said that quality education is available in uh, private institutions only but as per the qs world university rankings there are nine government uh, sector educational institutions listed uh, so uh, what's your opinion on that and why should we choose a private university over and above a government institution so the choice is entirely yours i mean there's no two way about it what i intended to say was that uh, you know post this pandemic situation what will happen is that digital world will be getting very very robust and stronger it was very robust infrastructure wise but tomorrow it will be very very bankable and credible so what i intended to tell was that even a particular college or a university which the other day was not very aspirational or not very you know never looked like to you know match with the very best in the qs ranked university kind of a league can offer you similar quality of education and a learning environment thanks to technology because let me tell you what happens is you require good resources faculty resources in particular you require good labs today however good a college is a co that particular college or a university or a department cannot cannot say that they have everything which matters for learning with them in terms of infrastructure so we always had a resource crunch we always talked about cluster based you know approach wherein the labs can be in a cluster and students can migrate and rotate it never happened that way but thankfully with the technology available that we can virtually create you know those kind of an labs and experimental labs wherein probably one can conduct not only research but even hands-on experiences right and thanks to those intelligent uh, softwares which will interface between uh, between the participant the researcher or the student with uh, those uh, lab equipments and those lab codes or things like that so what I intended to tell was that here is an opportunity not to you know, uh, look far and wide for what can be the right university for me or not to distinguish a public institution from a private institution. You have to have a checklist. First is whether my college has a LMS. LMS means learning management system. If it is there, put a great big tick because that is important right that college has a learning management system so that it can provide you provide you with a lot of asynchronous learning a lot of content which probably you can fall back on even if you miss a class you know where to go then whether you have teachers who are performing artists in a way that they can they can they are good storytellers they can interact with you over over new media over this uh, virtual uh, classrooms right they can tell you a story because as uh, professor Chaudhary said very rightly and i like that that uh, everything is available in online digitally you know all your learning and all your resources you can download a lot of things now teacher has to play a role wherein probably they can help you connect those dots they can they can put the problems they can state the problems before you very well and they can mentor you or they can guide you or they can participate with you in the solutions you know how you design the solution because that makes a great story so what i wanted to tell was that you have to have a checklist that whether my colleges are having good storytellers lmss great infrastructure in terms of in terms of technology because uh, you partly your physical infrastructure will be very very important your labs will be important your smart classrooms will be important right and then you figure it out whether you have a great company or not because that particular college or university should provide you with a kind of an ecosystem the physical ecosystem with the with the mates which you have uh you know because should should give a great company to you they should have a great wavelength or or uh you know uh, they, they should be able to you should be able to learn from them right 
both physically and as well as digitally because even you are participating along with them in debates digitally or interacting with them or solving a problem or or being in a virtual lab so these are the things which probably you should check in that whether you have the right set of students uh, profile students faculty out there lmss out there and go for conveniences because see uh, thankfully with this kind of an content available today one should not uh, be bogged down or feel low that probably they are unable to afford that kind of an education or they're unable to merit that kind of a college or university for him or her what is important is that you have a big big digital world before you it's a huge plentiful resource there can be a problem of plenty so you require a bit of a guidance that is where important the importance of teacher will be to understand your digital psychology to understand your little potential and connect you with the right kind of and skills as i said the tomorrow let me tell you five years from now more than 60 percent of the vocations which you see which those colleges and the universities put as placements these are the companies these are the jobs they will all vanish right so you will get to see new new vocations coming in so you should look for an environment which can guide you ably in figuring it out what are those vocations emerging vocations how you are able to connect those vocations with the with the learning of the right set of skills and how you're able to deepen your knowledge in the program in which probably you are in great thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Sarkar. thank you uh, okay so uh, now we are we just left with four minutes uh, before uh, no the session ends uh, so i would uh, i would have uh, you know some last uh, uh, you know a piece of information anybody who wants to add on give give some piece of advice to the audiences who joined us today uh, no it would be uh, uh, no really welcome i will just end with one line that this is the time you know uh, of turning a disadvantage into advantage apparent disadvantage is a real good advantage well we would have anyway gone to digital learning in times to come but pandemic has quick process or leapfrog the process and welcome it be a digital personality have the digital resources go into webinars get into deep search deep digging of what you need to learn and need to uh, what you want to do be a learner beyond the classroom not a student of the classroom not a student for a degree but a learner for a life and a career a productive career if that is the back of the mind teacher is only a mentor and not the last word no teacher today in the digital world can be last or can be the last word our job here is only to be the first stimulus taking it ahead is your job and digital gives that opportunity with that i would like to sign off thank you very much for this opportunity siksha thank you so much professor chaudhary for joining us sir uh, yes uh, dr bishwa joy yeah i will only say the same thing uh, world will again smile so take it as an opportunity take this as an opportunity to learn take this as an opportunity to enrich yourself so that when the times are again there you make hay and uh, another thing i will definitely say that during this time of pandemic take care of your elders and be a responsible person be a more responsible person but when when this thing ends you must remember that you have gone through such a phase and remind it to the next generation and be a better human being thank you oh, good great so if you if you want me to add one more line is that i will suggest that there's no reason why we should hurry or we should panic we should feel a little low that probably i am not knowing that particular skill which my friend is knowing or the world is uh, or world is uh, talking about right let us be slow but be very sure because just remember when the mobile came into our lives we we're very slow but then uh, we learned a lot of features and it was self-learning nobody taught you how to use a mobile uh, so tomorrow i believe that the technology will be so good will be so user friendly that uh, you know that will be your best friend your best guide right and if not the philosopher uh, the technology will be your best guide and our best friend so be with technology and uh, you will learn on your own because there's nothing more more uh, self-satisfying and gratifying than self-learning and online education is here to stay so be online 
be connected and yes it will be always important let me tell you from now to have good education counseling so talk to your good teachers always even if you're looking for university or college look for somebody who can help you guide you right because the world is offering you plentiful of options so much of learning so it will be very very important for you to ascertain that this is what my potential is right and my abilities are and this is what i can gain more to make myself well-rounded for the world tomorrow wishing you all the best my dear students thank you so much dr sakkar uh I would like to thank all the panelists who joined us today, gave their precious time. It was really an honor uh, and a pleasure to interact with you. And uh, I would like to thank all the audiences, all the students who uh, took out uh, time to join us and uh, listen to uh, our expert thoughts today. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I wish you all the best. Yes, uh, you're saying something, Dr. Chatterjee. No, thank you, thank you so much. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining and uh, stay home, stay safe. Wish you all the best for this uh, admission session and for your examinations. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.